Rates, real estate investment trusts are companies that own and in most cases operate income producing real estate. Think about office spaces, apartment buildings, warehouses, hospitals, hotels, and even aged care centers. They are the landlords of those properties. And here in Australia, with the sharpest increase in interest rate in more than 40 years, it's no surprise the share prices of commercial property rates have been hit hard. Yet, for some investors, that means opportunities. So in this video, I'm going to compare three Australian rate ETFs in terms of their holdings, their measurement fees, and past performance. So by the end of this video, you'll have a better grasp how these Australian rates or A rates ETFs can fit into your portfolio. Now let's dive in. Rates can play an important part in an investment portfolio because they typically offer a strong stable dividend, which is primarily from the rent. Plus, they offer a backstage pass to the commercial real estate market, even for people who don't have the ability to invest directly. That's not all, shares of publicly listed rates are readily traded on the major stock exchanges. Independent directors, analysts, and auditors, as well as the business and financial media monitor, listed rates, performance, and outlook. And this oversight provides investors with a measure of protection and transparency. It can also provide diversification to a portfolio due to its low correlation to stocks. And it can help hedge the potential inflation as the rent growth typically keeps up with the inflation. Now, onto the flip side. Rates don't offer much in terms of capital appreciation, and this is due to its special structure that they must pay 90% of their income back to investors, so only 10% can be reinvested back to the rate to buy new holdings, which hinders its potential growth. And rates dividends are taxed as regular income compared to some traditional growth stocks. The game is deferred in the future capital gain when you sell. And some rates have high management and transaction fees. There are mainly six types of rates depending on the nature of the property, industrial, retail, residential, storage, office, and diversified. Industrial rates own and manage industrial facilities like warehouses and distribution centers. They play an important part in e-commerce. Centurial rate is a typical industrial rate. In their portfolio, we can see they have Woolworths Distribution Center in New South Wales, Telstra Data Center in Victoria, a transport logistics center, manufacturing warehouse in other states. Retail rates own and manage shopping malls, supermarkets, and boutique shops. And typical retail rates in Australia, such as Accenture Group, which owns and operates 43 Westfield shopping centers. Another one is Vicinity, which owns Cheston in Victoria, Emporium Melbourne, and the Glen, Queen Victoria Building in Sydney. Residential rates own and operate big blocks of apartments, townhouses, and well-planned communities. And Stockland is a leading Australian residential rate that has built a couple of communities. Storage rates own, operate, and manage mini warehouse storage facilities. National Storage Rate is one of the leading self-storage providers in Australia and New Zealand. They provide residential and commercial storage to customers at more than 200 centers. Office rates focus on leasing office spaces to government agencies, banks, and law firms. For example, Dexas specializes in leasing office spaces. They own many office spaces such as QV Melbourne, 80 Collins Street, Number 5 Martin Place, and Waterfront Brisbane. Diversify rates on multiple types of rates, making them ideal for investors looking to get exposure to a variety of real estate asset types. If we compare the past 10 year performance of A rate index with the typical broad equity market index SP ASX 200, total return A rate index outperformed ASX 200 by 0.3% per year due to its higher income return. So, how much of your investment pie should be dedicated to rates? Multiple studies have found that the optimal rate portfolio allocation may be between 5 to 15%. David Swanson, PhD CIO of the Yale Endowment, recommends a 15% allocation to rates for most investors. According to Morningstar Fund's management glide path model, an optimal allocation for certain investors could start at 18% for an investor with a 45-year investment horizon, gradually declining to 3% at retirement and 2% after 15 years in retirement. The three rate ETFs that we're going to compare today are MVA, SLF, VAP from three different fund management companies, 
The three ETFs are tracking different indices, therefore with different numbers of holdings. In terms of popularity, Vanguard Australian Property Securities Index ETF VAP is four to five times of the size of the other two funds. And I can see the reasons before we even look at their performance. VAP has the lowest fee, covers more rates, and distributes its dividends four times a year. As they're tracking different rate indices, their subsector weighting is different. Top five holdings from the three ETFs are the same, except MVA gives more weight to office rate, Texas, Goodman Group is a diversified rate, they are commercial properties in Australia, New Zealand, Hong Kong and other countries and they are the largest owner, manager and developer of industrial property in Australia. S Center is the landlord of Westfield Shopping Centers and Stockland has more than 200 self-storage centers in Australia. Mervac Group is another diversified rate that specializing in development and management. Dexis is the office rate. VAP has the most holdings of the three and we can see here SLF pretty much covers the top 22 rates of VAP plus two other office rates. MVA just takes 17 rates from the VAS 33 holdings plus the retail rate. And due to the different holdings, diversified rates take the most weight followed by retail and industrial. SLF and VAP follow the same order with VAP's top three subsector weights slightly diluted than SLF. In terms of franking credit, VAP has the highest franking level, meaning more franking credits are attached to the dividend paid to the investors. According to the latest record, SLF has the highest dividend yield followed by VAP and MVA. Okay, let's look at their price, income, and total return of the three ETFs. VAP provides the highest total return in the past five years, 10 years, and annualized return since inception. Well, those are the data published by the funds. As always, I like to run the real test using portfolio app, share site. Suppose I bought $1,000 worth of shares from each of the ETFs since their inception dates. Let's ignore the final balance here as holding times of each ETFs are different. SLF's annual capital growth is negative. VAP is definitely the winner here. It's got the highest income return, highest price return, therefore highest total return. How about we add another broad equity market ETF to see how A rates compare. Let's try A200, Beta Shares Australian 200 ETF. Surprisingly, VAP beats it. Higher income return, higher price return. Let's try another broad equity market ETFs, VAS Vanguard Australian Shares Index ETF that tracks the top 300 Australian companies. Okay, VAS still beats VAP even on income returns. If you're still watching until now, you're definitely interested in investing rates and you may want to check out this video where I discuss if rates are better than direct real estate investing. My name is Irene, I'll see you next week. Bye.